Mary, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash shoot. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this armor diet. Oppression and exploitation. Queen. Away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the armor diet? Oh my Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tired of religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They're trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of wait. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. Well, the only way we're going to get some of this armor diet. Oppression and exploitation. Queen. Touch one of my new sons. They show no love for the queen. Why they hate? 
hating on me. Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... Alright, hello everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your second morning wake-up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Don't forget to get those likes up, beloveds. Alright, y'all know how it is on the YouTube streets. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A Shakur. TikTok at Dr. A. Shakur and Twitter at DGoddess27. And as per usual, if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know what to do. All right, so let's get into it. All right, Aeon's in the house. Naja, RG Titan, Tracy, Bronze Flat Power God. Okay. Lillian X is here. One Muscle Power. All right, Mr. Elevation. Juju B is here. Courtney J, Terry Hinn, 504 Nola. Okay, Edward, I see you. Queen Sam is in the house. Let's get into it. Hey, Reggie. Everyone, please get those lights up. All right, let's get this party started. Hey, Miss Peaches. Miss E.B. is in the house. Jeff A.T.L. Deronda. All right, the lovely T. Okay, so let's get it started. Uh, first of all, let's talk about that fight that happened a couple of weeks ago. Because now the Attorney General of Missouri is calling for an investigation. And he has some harsh things to say. And I find it all very interesting because even though uh, this was a fight that likely went too far, uh, the person who is being charged is not the was not the aggressor, was not the one who instigated this whole thing. Now, they say the girl, Kaylee, the teenager, that she started this whole thing. In fact, that she had gotten into a fight previously, and they say that she was already on suspension and was supposed to be at home. But instead, she shows up, I guess, at the bus stop or when the other girls were coming home, and uh, her and her friend were, were going to jump this girl. Now, for those of you who saw the video, which I'm not going to show, uh, Kaylee was the aggressor. She, in fact, did take the first punch, okay, the first swing. Uh, so you shouldn't get to start a fight and then get your butt beat, and then you're the victim. That's not how it should go as far as I'm concerned. But nonetheless, I do think that the whole thing went too far, okay? So let's talk about the update because this came out a, few, a couple of days ago. All right, likes up, everyone, please like and share. Now, here's what they're saying. And let me put the Attorney General of Missouri's picture up here on the screen. All right, that's him. Uh, so Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey has opened an investigation into the school district that he bears, that he said bears some responsibility for the brutal attack on a St. Louis teen who was seen in a viral, in a viral video having her head bashed into the pavement by another student. Now, on Thursday, Bailey told Fox News Digital exclusively that he would be opening an investigation to the Hazelwood School District and that their DEI programs contributed to the safety failures following the violent attack, saying that Hazelwood owes the parents of the district and the entire community an explanation as to what role these radical programs and safety failures played here. Uh, this is what he said to the staff, emphasizing that this is the focus of the investigation. Now, in a letter sent to Hazelwood School District uh, Superintendent Dr. Nettie Collins Hart, Hart uh, Bailey said that he is disturbed to see that the school district has ignored longstanding Missouri law and elevated political narrative above student safety. Bailey said back in 2020, the HSD Board of Education adopted a statement of solidarity, which influenced the district to, among other things, categorize and treat students differently based on race recruit, hire, and promote staff based on race and to reevaluate the district's relationship with the local police. Now, starting in 2021, the school year, uh, Bailey says that Hazelwood removed uniformed police officers from its schools after unsuccessfully trying to subject its school re resource officers to the district's diversity, equity, and inclusion programming. He said there were no school resource officers at the school when the victim was attacked. Now, as of this writing, the victim remains in critical condition in a St. Louis area hospital, notably during the attack on the victim, uh, which was captured on video by other students. Not a single school resource officer was there on the scene to protect the victim or to restore order. Now, Bailey has said uh, because of this, the district is putting student safety at risk. 
saying that the absence of, of school resource officers on the scene is directly attributable uh, to Hazelwood's insistence on prioritizing race-based policies over basic student safety. By its actions, HSD has endangered not only the victim, but the general school community in large. Now, Bailey said the investigation will determine whether the school district violated Missouri's Human Rights Act, which guarantees every Missouri student the right to be free from discrimination and the right to full a full employment of places of public accommodation. Bailey then demanded the school district turn over a series of records related to bullying, anti-bullying, and harassment, student violence records as well, all about the decision to remove law enforcement and about the decision to remove law enforcement from schools, as well as records about the district's anti-discrimination policies and DEI action plan. Here's the question. Why does he keep talking about discrimination? Is he trying to turn this into a hate crime? Is he trying to say that this girl was beat up because of discrimination? Because that had nothing to do with it from what people are saying. He says, by promoting DEI and excluding uniformed law enforcement from campus in 2021, uh, this school bears some responsibility for this incident, yet it has not offered a substantive apology to the victim of this violent attack who is still fighting for her life. This school owes the parents of the district an explanation as to what role these radical programs and safety failures play here. Now, for Fox News Digital has reached out to Hazelwood uh, East High School and the Hazelwood School District for comment on the Attorney General's investigation, but hasn't heard back. Bailey also added that the suspect, now listen to this, that the suspect in the violent brawl should be tried as an adult and charged with murder if the offense rose to homicide. A lawyer for the victim named Kaylee and her family told uh, Fox News Digital that Kaylee suffered a fractured skull that resulted in brain bleeding and swelling and that she has still not gained consciousness. Well, let me just tell you something, you know, uh, unfortunately, this is the price that one pays for starting a fight because you don't know how someone else is going to react and you don't know to what lengths they will go to to defend themselves. OK, that's what you don't know. And so anyway, this is all crazy. Now they want to charge the girl as an adult. See, it really could have been prevented. Hold on. I thought there was another update on her condition, but nonetheless, she had bleeding on the brain. And uh, for those of you who missed it, let me just pull up some uh, screenshots. That's when it all started. That's Kaylee. They urged Chief Juvenile Officer Rick Gaines to consider uh, the case with compassion, and they have a petition up. And they all, the family of the uh, uh, of the one that's accused of committing the beating. Okay, so they had a GoFundMe up, which I've heard has been taken down. And then they say that Kaylee has a, a GoFundMe that's still up. Why was her GoFundMe taken down? I, I just have questions if that's true, but that's what I heard, that her GoFundMe was taken down. Uh, at the end of the day, here's the thing. Parents need to talk to their children about bullying and picking on people because they clearly say that Kaylee was always getting into fights. She was known for jumping on people and that this whole thing started because of some teenage guy that she was dating. And they said Kaylee had gotten into a fight previously was on suspension. Now, this is what I heard. They're not reporting this in the media, but this is what has been said. Uh, basically said that she had been on suspension. And uh, hold on, here's another report right here. Harassed and bullied. Okay, because this is what they say happened. They said that the black girl was being harassed and bullied by Kaylee. And like I said, they say that she was supposed to be on suspension when she came and started this fight. So they say harassed and bullied, family of 15-year-old black girl arrested for a viral fight that left Kaylee Gain unconscious, speaks out, says GoFundMe removed their campaign. So the 15-year-old girl facing charges in connection to the fight that left teen, another teen unconscious claims that she was harassed and bullied before the incident. Now, the incident happened near Hazelwood East High School on March the 8th. Viral cell phone footage shows two teens scuffling in the street while a crowd stands by. A few seconds into the video, one girl slams the other to the ground and starts punching her in the head repeatedly. 
She then started to slam her head on the concrete, leaving her convulsing on the pavement. A brawl between other teens broke out steps away. According to the St. Louis Police Department, officers responded to the scene at around uh, 2.30 p.m. Responding officers located a juvenile female suffering a severe head injury. The victim was transported to an area hospital where she remains in critical condition. The alleged attacker, who hasn't been publicly named by law enforcement, was taken into custody and charged with assault. St. Louis County Family Court is holding her, uh, the department added, and they say an investigation is underway. Now, the victim was identified as 16-year-old Kaylee Gain, and earlier this week, her family's attorney, Brian K. Mirror, uh, said that Gain is still unconscious and has suffered severe injuries. They said the only medical information that the family feels comfortable sharing at this time is to confirm that Kaylee has suffered a fractured skull that resulted in brain bleeding and swelling. The full scope and extent of Kaylee's injuries and prognosis for recovery cannot be determined until with God's grace, she regains consciousness. And the family asks that you continue to keep Kaylee in your thoughts and prayers as she fights to recover. Loved ones created two fundraisers to help the Gain family with expenses. One raised over four, nearly $400,000, uh, while the other garnered close to $30,000. According to the Daily Mail, the aunt of the 15-year-old juvenile who was arrested said that she was defending herself in the fight and called on local officials to show compassion in her case. She touted that the child, uh, she touted that the child's an honor roll student who speaks several different languages. Her comments come after leaders have voiced their opinion about the attack. Missouri Attorney General uh, Attorney General Andrew Bailey said that the juvenile should be tried as an adult and that if Gates succumbs to her injuries, the offense should be a homicide. Saying the evil, this evil and complete disregard for human life has no place in Missouri. This is what he says. Or anywhere. I am praying for the victim. The criminal should be charged and tried as an adult if the victim dies. That offense should rise to homicide. Juvenile family... Uh, the juvenile's family st started a GoFundMe, I'm sorry, started a change.org petition identifying the young black girl as Marnice DeClue. Now, the family is concerned the incident is inciting racial divisions and political strife, adding that they have re received a slew of death threats. They called on officials to be fair and consider restorative justice and rehabilitation. They say it's, it is unjust that such an accomplished young woman should be charged as an adult for assault without considering all the facts of the case that led to the incident where harm occurred. We urge Chief Juvenile Officer Rick Gaines of the 21st Circuit Court not to charge the juvenile as an adult. Now, in addition, in addition, they said, we request that all aspects of her life be considered during indictment and sentencing. Her academic achievements, extracurricular involvement, linguistic skills, skills, and most importantly, her victimhood as a bullied student who was merely defending herself under intense, uh, under intense and flight versus flight versus fight circumstances. Now, the family also launched a GoFundMe to help with legal expenses, but the platform promptly took it down after three thousand dollars was raised. The funds are expected to be retained to the donors. GoFundMe claims the petition unfairly painted Gain as a bully and presumed she was the victim as a complicated situation. First of all, she was a bully. Do you all hear this? Uh, they said they unfairly painted her as a bully. Well, she was a bully. That's what everybody said. And she was already in trouble for fighting previously. She wasn't even supposed to be there. Now, a GoFundMe spokeswoman confirmed to Daily Mail that the fundraiser was removed and that all donors have been refunded. GoFundMe's terms of service explicitly prohibit fundraising for the legal defense of an alleged violent crime. So there you have it. There you have it. Yes, they're going to flip the narrative. And that's the thing. Listen, I get defending yourself, but the girl did go too far. She really went too far. I'm sorry. That's the truth of the matter. At the end of the day, no, she shouldn't be tried as an adult, but she went too far. When she saw that the girl was not swinging back, she should have stopped right then and there. Okay. But, you know, let's remember these are teenagers. Okay. These are teenagers. And they're a lot of times they're not thinking, you know, with sense. In many cases, okay. Um, someone says, What about Kyle Rittenhouse? says Just Biz. Exactly. I mean, but Kyle Rittenhouse has the complexion for protection. We don't have that benefit. Okay, so I just wish she hadn't gone so far because now this may cost her significantly. And and the fact that they're talking about how accomplished she is in school and she's on the honor roll and all of this stuff, they don't care. That will give them all the more reason to want to crucify her and to ruin her life. Okay, I guarantee you that's what they're gonna try to do. They don't care that she was defending herself. 
They really don't. Okay, they do not care that she was defending herself at the end of the day. They're going to look at it like she was just an angry uh, black teen and that she did this and viciously. And then look, they're going to paint Kaylee as the victim, not as the aggressor. That's how this whole thing's going to go. Please pay attention. This is all crazy. Not just as we are subscribed, uh, subjected to a double standard in this so-called justice system. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we already know that people that look like me are not allowed to defend yourself. Just think about it. I already told you the story from a few years ago here in Georgia where the black homeowner came home to a man in his yard at the house that he bought with a box cutter threatening him when he asked him to leave. And then when the man charged and lunged at him and he shot him and took his life, they put the black man in prison. Now, of course, that was self-defense. And, and, and in fact, Georgia had stand your ground laws. But do you think they care? No, they don't. Okay? They absolutely don't. This is all crazy. This is all crazy. Shout out to the elder Barbara Rashawn. Okay? Uh, Queen, you know when you in a fight, you don't stop. But how did she know she went too far? Uh, she could have been scared and tired. tired of. I mean, she could have been. She could have been, but at the end of the day, she still went too far, whether she knew it or not. And this is all going to be just real bad for her. I'm just saying, I wish she had stopped. Okay, if it was the other way around, we know what would have happened. Absolutely. Absolutely, Elder. You're absolutely right. We already know how that would have gone. But, you know, at the bottom line is, it was self-defense. Yes, she took it too far, perhaps, but it was self-defense. She was not the aggressor. And here's the thing. She was already being bullied and harassed. So she likely was like afraid, like you all said. And here's another thing, too. Let's not forget that there was another teenager, a black teenager, who jumped in. So they jumped her for one, okay, until someone else jumped in to stop it. But at the end of the day, this is all just bad. And I'm telling you, it's not going to work out good because at the end of the day, they've already flipped the narrative. They're already saying that Kaylee was the victim. Okay, GoFundMe's taking down the uh the gofundme or whatever and now they're trying to, and this this attorney general he's clearly racist as far as i'm concerned he's clearly a whole racist because he's sitting there talking about try her as an adult he's not taking into consideration the fact that she was being bullied and harassed for for a while before this even happened he's not taking into uh account kaylee's behavior at school because here's the thing why don't they bring that up why aren't they talking about kaylee's you know, her behavior in school. What are her grades like? How many times has she been in trouble? Because they say she was always starting fights and always jumping on people. And she probably felt that she could do that because some silly little black teen was helping her, okay? Having her back at the end of the day. This is all crazy. Misha Vincent says, I pray the victim gets a good lawyer. You mean the, uh, you mean the girl who's being charged? Yeah. Because she's the real victim. I'm sorry, she is. I mean, I guess we could say they're both victims, but at the end of the day, uh, the one who is being charged was a victim too, okay? She was a victim too. And if this were the other way around, now let's look at it this way. If this had been uh, a white teenager who beat the crap out of a black girl and did the same to her, that had been harassing and bullying her, they would be making all sorts of excuses. They would be saying, oh, well, she was being bullied and harassed. You know, they be saying the same things we're saying, basically, is all I'm saying. Okay, at the end of the day. Roddy says her family better lawyer up to protect her. Yeah. Mission Vision said, I'm talking about uh, the one being charged. Forget the one. I know who you're talking about, beloved. I know. I know who you're talking about. Okay, so Reggie said, Kaylee effed around and found out. Yes, this is true. Here's the thing. Like I said, you cannot do something to a person and then get to dictate how they respond. And that's what she did. Why was she, why did she even approach that girl? She approached her. It's obvious from the footage. She approached that girl and was the aggressor. Okay. And like I said, they should also include her past history, prior things that she's done in school. That's what should be included when this goes to trial. I just hate it all the way around because this girl is probably going to end up serving some time for this. Okay, somebody who's an on road student speaks different languages and all of that has her whole future ahead of her. And this is what's happened at the end of the day. Uh, so T of y'all said that girl was fighting for her life. Yeah, she was. Uh, goodness, Rated Bo said George Zimmerman, don't start a fight you can't finish. And he got off. Exactly. That's how that goes, right? Exactly. And so anyway, just being said, they get they get scared. When they catch Nubian Knuckles. Mm -hmm. 
So let me tell you something. Here's the thing, too. You know, I say that the girl went too far, but at the end of the day, what I also have to consider is that if you have been bullied and harassed for a while, because something similar happened to me once, something similar happened to me once. And when you have been bullied and harassed for a while, yeah, you will snap. You will absolutely snap. Okay. That's just what it is. Something similar happened to me when I was like 19, when I was working this job, this girl and her sister were always bothering me, you know, every day talking trash because the girl, um, Liked my boyfriend at the time, but long story short, she ended up coming to work with a switchblade, okay, and was across the room from me, threatening me with that switchblade. Well, we got into it that day, and since she let me know that she had a switchblade, I made sure that I had something, too, that she didn't know. And so, with that all being said, we ended up coming into the restroom at the same time, and let's just say it all went bad, and she got the short end of the stick. Okay, we both got fired, but no, no police were called, and even if they had been, it was a clear case of self-defense. And that girl had been bothering me for three months. I'm not even exaggerating. She was bothering me at work, talking slick, doing all kinds of stuff. And I didn't say anything because I needed my job. And then one day I told my grandmother before I went to work that day, I put on jogging pants and a t-shirt and K-Swiss tennis shoes. And I told my grandmother, I said, grandma, when I go to work today, if that girl says anything to me, I said, I'm coming home early. And my grandmother was like, no, sweetie, don't do it. It's almost Christmas time and this and that. And I, and I was like, nope. I said, I've had enough. She says one more thing to me. So I got to work that day and she was talking trash across the room and held up a switchblade to let me know. Talk about she was going to cut my face. Yeah. So that's what it was. So I do get it. I do get it. Sometimes you get fed up. And when you get fed up, you will do more than you should. Because I clearly did. Okay. I clearly did more than I should. At the end of the day, I can't say she didn't ask for it. It's all I'm saying. Queen, tell me you whooped that tree. <laughs> yeah, I, I did more than that. I told you I had something on me. When she let me know she had a switchblade, I was glad she showed it to me. Because that let me know, okay, you want to pull out weapons? Well, let me get one too. Okay, so I had something in my sock waiting for her. Pay attention. That didn't turn out good for her is all I'm saying. Um, Queen Sam says, girl, if he wanted to, he would have been, been with you. So don't come for the queen. <laughs> I know that's right, beloved, okay? Hold on, let me get some of these comments. Red said, child, I know what you're talking about, queen, okay? Y'all know how it is? So yes, you know, at the end of the day, she was likely fed up. And, and here's the thing. When someone has been constantly bothering you over and over again, and you keep dealing with it, you will snap. That's just a fact. You will absolutely snap. All hell no. <laughs> All hell no said warriors come out and play. <laughs> oh, the queen drugged her across the concrete. I did, really. I really did. It was awful. And here's the thing. After they came in there and broke it up, because here's the thing. Her friend was in the restroom with her. And as soon as we got to fighting, and it was going all bad for her. Her friend screamed and ran out yelling, they're fighting, they're fighting. And so supervisors and security came rushing in and broke it up. And then they took me to the office first. And then um, I was in the office and she came in there after. They, they brought her in after the fact. And she ran up on me from the back and I just threw her into a Xerox machine. And it was on again. I mean, it was all real crazy. That's all I'm saying. It was all real crazy, but I tell you what, she had that switchblade, but she didn't get a chance to pull it out, okay? She didn't get a chance to pull that switchblade out, uh, but uh, what I had for her, yeah, I had time to pull that out, all right? That's what I will say. <laughs> Mickey said, not nuck if you buck. And the crazy thing is, y'all won't believe this, we both got fired, and then when we went, we both got hired at the same place. When we went to look for another job, we both ended up getting hired at the same place. And then she wanted to be my friend. But I bet you do want to be friends now. Yeah, she was apologizing, trying to be cool then. That's how that all turns out. But anyway, I digress. Okay, so now let's talk about the elder who was uh, basically, they're trying to steal his house. And then they want to arrest him. So let's talk about it. Like, up, everyone, please like and share. Elderly Georgia homeowner forced out of his house and arrested after alleged fraudster claims ownership. He said, made us feel like squatters. This is all so crazy.
So it goes on to say, Charles and Charmaine Almond lived in the same Stone Mountain, Georgia home, located 16 miles east of Atlanta. Uh, for the last two decades, they've been there uh, before officials told the couple on Tuesday that they no longer owned the house and had to vacate. He says, they made us feel like we were squatters. Just tossed, just tossed my stuff out like it was trash. Actually, that's what Miss Charmaine says, Charmaine Allman, the wife. Now, it says that most of the couple's belongings were scattered all over the yard. The outlet reported that an anonymous man allegedly falsified a deed and submitted the documents online with DeKalb County to claim ownership of the Almond's home. It's just amazing to me that people can do stuff like this and then get, take someone else's house. Now, the couple became suspicious of the sketchy activity when they received letters in the mail confirming that a second mortgage had been taken out. They said, we don't have no mortgage. The new homeowner told the couple he had purchased a home from a foreclosure. So Charles Allman, who refused to leave when asked, was arrested on a criminal trespass warrant filed on March 13th, according to jail records. Uh, they say, I don't know how this is possible. This is what Charmaine said about her husband's arrest. How does this happen, period? It's very upsetting to see my husband in handcuff, handcuffs at 77 years old and placed in the car because he didn't want to leave his own home. He has nowhere to go, no family. This is all so sad. Like, this is how they do our people. Charles Allman was released from jail on Thursday evening. Now, they say it's too, it's, uh, too easy to forge a deed and record it. This is what real estate attorney Richard Allenbick said. It's too, it's too big of a problem nowadays because of the fact that an e-filing, the e-recording of deeds is so easy. It's very easy to record forged deeds. Alan Beck said that notaries don't check the identification of the people who submit the documents to verify that they are the rightful owners. Victims of fraud who have proved to be, who have proved to be the rightful homeowners can still be ordered by a judge to move out and then have to pay fines. This is all crazy. Now, they say last week, a New York City homeowner was arrested uh, after sh when she attempted to remove suspected squatters from her queen's property. Adelaide Andaloro, age 47, was nabbed after changing the locks last month on the $1 million home in Flushing, Queens, that she says she inherited from her parents when they died. The Queens District Attorney's Office was turned away uh, from the $1 million home in Flushing, as several tenants claimed they were renters, not squatters. Yeah, this is really a problem, okay? This is real crazy to me. Like, how does this even happen? How does this even happen? I don't even know what to say about this. I don't even know what to say about this. This is all real crazy. And here's the thing, too. We've heard these stories too many times. And then these squatters get into people's homes and you can't even get them out. Remember the story I did a few months ago where the woman was in the military and she came home and there was a strange man in her house and set up camp and then refused to leave and was talking trash? This is absolutely deplorable. Chickasaw says, I blame the government for this. Okay, this is all crazy. Marjorie says, scammers. I just wonder what's going to be done about it. I wonder what's going to be done about it because that's not right. They should not be allowed to put someone out of their home. And then they arrested a 77-year-old man, really. Queen Sam says, they say put cameras on your homes if you're going to be gone any amount of time. Yeah, or if you can, the best thing to do is to have someone stay in at the home. If you can get someone to, to house sit for you, a relative or somebody that you know and trust, have them to house it for you because this is all crazy. And these people who do the squat, they know the they know the laws. Okay, they know all about the laws. So they can end up standing there for months before you can get rid of them. Red says, I blame anyone who voted for Brandon and Cavani. I know that's right. Okay. I absolutely agree with you, beloved. Hopefully, those two won't be back in the office. And so anyway, you know, prayers for that couple. I hope they get back in their house and everything turns out fine. And the person who did forge the documents and all that, I hope they give it exactly what's coming to them. Okay. Now, in other news, let's talk about this young man, a biracial young man, went to stay at his Caucasian friend's home 
and uh something nefarious has clearly happened and the people are trying to act like they don't know what's going on but i want you all to hear this because it's really interesting they definitely in my opinion know something okay the young man's name is caden black all right somebody sent me this case regarding caden black this is caden black and that's his mother kara patterson something sinister has happened caden was staying with a friend uh, and his family he decided he wanted to live in lower windsor pennsylvania uh, near his friends instead of moving back with his mother so she allowed him to stay there along with his father maurice black something sinister has happened i want you to listen to this regarding what happened to Caden? Because something sinister has happened, and I want to say this to the people he was staying with: guilt is just like pain. It's going to force you to feel it, and pain is just like guilt. It's going to squeeze you, and it's going to twist you until you actually start speaking the truth. A teenager through and through, from football and working out to dirt bikes and goofing off, Caden's smile always feeding his family's joy, and he would laugh. Oh, he had the greatest. The greatest laugh. I mean, it was deep, and he would like hold his stomach and bend over. He would laugh so hard. None of my other kids laugh like that. <laughs> Even Caden's laughter now brings his mother tears. Kara Patterson was expecting her son to come see her in Maryland in 2022 for another festive holiday. Finally, got like the Christmas plans that he was coming here, that he was spending the night, and everything seemed normal. Then I called and called and called him like, "Where is my boy?" I told Caden, "Where you at?" You know. Caden's dad, Maurice, was expecting him to come by and get the dogs some exercise. It was a Sunday tradition, even after a falling out between father and son, that had Caden living a couple minutes away in this Wrightsville neighborhood with his friend's family. We don't hear nothing about that in two days. It's like something right. It's not like him to not contact him, his mother, or myself. And personally, if some kid's living in my house, it's just me. Maybe I might be a weirdo or something. The parent of the kid called me. Wouldn't you walk or go check on him? Two days later, his friend's father, Christopher Faust, filed a missing persons report. Chris Faust told me that he was up on Sunday morning, that he always gets up early, and that he was up by five or six, and that he had to have left either Saturday night or the early hours of Sunday morning. However, we later found out that Caden's cell phone was still connected to their Wi-Fi at 9.33 a.m. Sunday morning. Patterson feels Caden's missing cell phone holds the key. During the course of the investigation and looking into things, uh, we feel that there's uh, the possibility of foul play. Chief Jim Thomas says dogs trained in electronic sniffing searched the Faust home, coming up empty. The other part of this investigation, which is disturbing, is we don't know what time he left. It could have been after that 8 o'clock, 8.30 connection. It could have been beforehand. We don't know. Caden's family does know he struggled emotionally at times, even getting arrested for a physical altercation with his school bus driver. Yet the family felt an upcoming court hearing would see Caden exonerated. It doesn't make sense that on December 17th, one week after he turned 19, one week before Christmas, that he would just decide to run away for a case that wasn't even coming up until the end of January. Caden's beloved forerunner, the one his mother gave him, was titled in Christopher Faust's name for insurance purposes. Listen. Months after the disappearance, Faust blocked the family on Facebook and sold it. If you believe he's missing, why would you sell it? If you knew he's coming back, you know what I mean? Kara Patterson's done press conferences. If anybody knows anything, please just let me know that my son is okay. And vigils hoping to keep the community looking for Caden. For the boy whose childhood was documented with so much love, simply gone. Uh, Aiden, Brooks up there, and I have him, I have all my kids tagged along. I never had the feeling that he was, you know, dead or anything, but just certain things, you know, just not had enough in my brain right now. But I ain't giving up hope yet, you know. He needs to be found, regardless of what the outcome is. There's a whole lot more to this, but I wanted you to see that right there. But I have my theories about what possibly happened to Caden. One, why Christopher Faust would you sell his vehicle? A couple of months after he disappeared. They're right there screaming guilt. Also, what wasn't said in that video was Christopher Faust has refused to communicate with the police. He's refused. So here are my theory. Christopher Faust is former military, Air Force. He has a lot of specialized training. He also has a logging company. Okay, so he spends a lot of times in the woods and the mountains and things like that. But he also loves to hike. He loves to go near the water. He loves to go uh, to the mountains also horseback riding. So something sinister happened in that household between Caden, Christopher Faust, and his son, Ethan. This is Ethan, the friend, alleged friend. Remember what I always say, just because you got friends in your circle don't mean they're in your corner. You see, Ethan 
is one of those wannabe street guys. He want to act tough. He wants to appear to be um, thuggish. Let's say it like that. But something happened between Ethan, Caden, Christopher Faust, maybe the rest of the family. And it may have something to do with, just my theory, maybe something happened between Caden and his sister. Maybe something happened between Caden and Ethan, and it got out of hand, and Christopher and Ethan have d done something to Caden and got rid of it. This is what uh, Christopher Faust does right here. I don't know if he does it full time or part time because he was working um, at one of the military uh, for, the, for the federal um, government. He was working for the federal government doing some other stuff. But this right here is what he does now. And this is his backyard. I don't know if the police have already taken cadaver dogs out there to search the backyard, especially on those wood piles way back there in the back, which I don't think he would be that ignorant enough to have something or a body or anything like it in his backyard. So I'm thinking some of these spots that Christopher Faust likes to go to, like Klein's Run Park, could be a place like this right here. It's plenty of space and opportunity. Like I said, he loves going hiking into the mountains. And in this post, he said he likes to watch his 12 and his 6, but he loves to hike. Has the sheriff or detectives looked in these areas? They even going as far as Potter County for a so-called family gathering. This is one of the spots that he was with Caden. And it seemed like him and Caden were by themselves. But they were together in this area. I'd be looking everywhere. This is another spot. This is the same spot. They just right now closer to the, right there closer to the water. And it appears him and Caden were there just in November of 2022 up at Northwest Trail. Uh-huh. So like I said, something has happened, whether it was something with Caden and the little sister, his daughter, or Caden and Ethan. But something happened and it got out of hand. And now they're covering for each other. That's why he won't talk to the police. He shut down. That's also why he sold uh, Caden's uh, forerunner and then blocked the family from any type of uh, access. That's suspicious. The milk stinks and the water stinks. I believe he sold it so DNA couldn't be found. I believe he sold it so that the police could not test it for anything. Has any of the other vehicles been tested? So there's plenty of space and opportunity in various places that needs to be searched of where he goes and where he has access to. Because Christopher Faust, and I want to say Ethan also, allegedly, has a lot of explaining to do. You got secrets that you're hiding. Where is Caden? You need to speak up because the pressure's only going to get harder. Something sinister has happened. You need to have a conscience and imagine if it was one of your children, Christopher Faust. Imagine. And I think that the whole family knows what happened because you got family secrets. So something is happening. We need to find out where Caden is, what happened to him. This family needs justice. Justice for Caden Black. This is all very sad. Of course they know something. And here's the thing. They had to have been good friends with Caden's family for the simple fact that Caden's car was in that man's name, Christopher Faust. It was in his name for insurance purposes. And that's why he was able to sell it. So they had to have really trusted him. But that, that young man is gone. They have done something to him. I'm, that young man is laying somewhere dead, I guarantee you. And probably, like uh, Prophet P.I. said, in one of those places where Christopher Faust likes to go and hang out, they'll probably never find his body. Look at all the mountainous terrain and then the water and all of that. There's no telling what actually happened to this young man. And now they've blocked the family that they were supposed to be friends with and are refusing to cooperate with the police. What does that tell you? You already know what that means. Of course they did something. Of course they did something to him. Otherwise, they would be out there looking for him with the family and they would absolutely be telling the police everything they know. And they definitely wouldn't have sold his truck. Why would you sell his truck like you know he's never coming back? Yeah, they know he isn't because they already know what they did to him. This is all so sad. This is all so sad. I, I feel really bad for the mother. Uh, with that all being said, moving right along. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Now, I want you all to hear this question that Karen had the nerve to ask black folk on TikTok. Please pay attention because she already knew the answer before she asked the question. Okay, I don't know what she was trying to prove, but let's get into it. I'm going to get in trouble for this. I already know, but you know what? I need to know. Are there certain black people that just don't like us because we're white? This is something that's bothered me for a long time. I just never feel like I can talk about it. I never feel like I can talk about it because I'm white. And I know I'm white. I'm so white, okay? And I'm not even being political or racial or anything. I just want to know from my black friends out there on TikTok, like, are there some black people that just don't like us because we're white for no other reason? 
because I'm like friendly to everybody and there's assholes that have every color. Let's just put it out there, okay? There's If there was an Olympic gold medal for gaslighting, you lab coats would be champion of the fucking universe. Every single time y'all start a video off by saying some goofy shit like, I know I'ma get in trouble for this, I know I'ma catch heat for this, lets me know that you know exactly what the fuck you were doing before you started recording the video. You knew the damn answer to that question before you asked it, just like you knew the answer would vary depending on who was answering it. Notice how you didn't ask your fellow members of the Bacon Soda Brigade out of any of them out there who hate us just because we're black, knowing damn well you hang out with them at bonfires and at your family reunion every year. Yeah, we all know that there's shitty people in every race. Everything that's white ain't evil, just like everything that's black ain't beautiful. But there has to be nuance when you have these conversations. Shit, there's black people who love white people more than white people love white people. So don't play this game like this is a one-sided issue or something. All y'all gotta do is get on here and say some shit that sounds good. You don't even gotta believe it. Black people be running to give y'all the fucking invite to the cookout as well as the damn recipe to the sweet potato pie. But even if, and this is a big if, we hated y'all simply due to the fact that y'all are diaper tone, please tell me what would come of it. Y'all wanna be oppressed and feel racism in this country so badly, yet none of y'all can tell us what it actually looks like. There is not a single thing in this country that you can point to that black people as a whole control that impacts white people's lives as a whole. You don't control the banking system, the education system, the judicial system, and damn sure not the political system. When we go to y'all establishment and y'all kick us out simply for being black, we take it on the chin and go to another white establishment hoping they gonna treat us with respect. Oh, but if we kick y'all out of our establishments just for being a pasty pilgrim, not only are y'all gonna play the victim card, but y'all are also gonna call up the Mighty Morphin Flower Rangers with a law degree to sue the piss out of us and take everything we ever worked for. Even if we tried to legally exclude y'all, that shit wouldn't even last long because like the popular saying goes in y'all community, every N-word got a price and all you gotta do is find it to buy your way in. Hell, y'all club so exclusive, we can't even get a seat at the table unless we somebody like Oprah, Jay-Z, LeBron James, or Tyler Perry. Even crazier part about all that is if one black person do something fucked up, the whole entire community got to an answer for it, including the rich ones. Oh, but let it be multiple people, and I literally mean multiple people, who have the same complexion and get charged with the exact same things over and over and over again. They get the literal privilege to be looked at as sick and twisted individuals who made a fucked up choice in life instead of it being looked at as a culture problem. Don't ask questions you don't want the answers to. Fucking Aldi brand Paris Hilton out here thinking shit sweet. Looking like an extra from Dawson's Creek and a car carrying member of the Starbucks and Stanley Club. The fuck wrong with y'all? I don't know about y'all, but I love him. He's hilarious. Okay? Now, why did she ask that? She already knew the answer. Girl, bye. Mm, mm, mm. One who <laughs> one who cares says, hold on. Y'all are something else. <laughs> Reggie said Elon Musk had the nerve to say everyone was slaves at one time. <laughs> Is that what he said? Courtney J said he ate her up. Okay. One who cares said, well said, sir. I absolutely agree. On purpose said, speak, my brother. <laughs> Not the bacon soda brigade. Okay, he clearly has a way with words. Please pay attention. Now, that all being said, before I get into Candace Owens, before I get into Candace Owens, I want you all to pay attention because those of you who wear wigs, you might want to be very careful, okay? This young woman got something called molestum contagiosum. I know you probably never heard of it, but here's what happened when she bought this wig from Amazon. Likes up, please like and share. It's 3 a.m. I'm in the hospital because I bought a wig off of Amazon and I ended up with Alaska. I bought the wig on February 29th and I wore it that same day just for a second. Um, just got something to do. I did like the overnight express shipping a delivery option, I mean, where they deliver between 4 and 7 a.m. I put it on and wore it for a couple hours. Then I came home and I washed it and then installed it. 
um then um i wore it for like a week and a half very about a week and i started breaking out with a rash like i have an allergic reaction to it across my hairline i don't know if you can I'm just saying like this wig was mishandled either by Amazon or from the seller and this is what the results were. It could have just been used, returned, and then they sipped it right back out and here I am. Y'all see that? Y'all see that she has something called molluscum contagiosum. Let's get into it. All from purchasing that wig from Amazon. So let's talk about what this is. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Hold on. Okay, here it is. Molluscum contagiosum is an infection caused by a pox virus. The result of the infection is usually a benign mild skin disease characterized by lesions and growths that may appear anywhere on the body. Uh, so it's obviously highly contagious. Apparently someone who had it was handling that wig that she had on. It says it's a common infection in children and occurs when a child comes in direct contact with a skin lesion or an object that has the virus on it. See, this is why I don't wear wigs, honey. I don't wear wigs, okay? I don't have time for it. I do not have time for it. Roddy said the virus entered through her pores. Likely so, beloved. Um, this is disgusting and possibly on purpose here, Reggie. <laughs> Reggie, not possibly on purpose. <laughs> Timber Dancing, Queen speaking in tongues. <laughs> also, hashtag by <bye> week. <laughs> Dad, stop starting. It's too early. Okay. <laughs> I'm not speaking in tongues. <laughs> Dad, you did not say I was speaking in tongues. Is that what it sounds like? Molluscum contagiosum. <laughs> Claudette said, and Claudette said, no wigs for me. <laughs> Reggie said, yes, I've been watching all kinds of braiding videos and hair things, okay? <laughs> Just Ben said, she got them bum bumps in, a, in his Kevin Hart, in your Kevin Hart voice. <laughs> ah, this is all crazy. <laughs> and Dan said, he's crying. I bet she was too. I bet she was too. Can y'all imagine putting that on your head and then having that stuff all over your face? And how long does it last? Let me go look that up. Hold on. Let me see how long this stuff lasts, honey, because I could not. Honey, if that happened to me, I would be sitting up here on this live with one of those uh, masquerade masks on like that guy had on in the last video on the main channel. Hold on. Let's look it up. How long does it last? Oh, Lord, this is dreadful. It says most of the time, molluscum clears up on its own without treatment. Each bump goes away. Each bump, mind you, goes away in about two to three months. New bumps can appear as the old ones go away. So it can literally take up to six to 12 months and sometimes longer for molluscum to go away fully. Sometimes doctors remove the bumps or have them go away to have them go away more quickly. Oh, honey. You mean tell me she could be walking around looking like that for a whole year? Ladies, please stop wearing these wigs. It ain't worth it. Like Miss Cena said, or Miss Sophia said, it just ain't worth it, okay? That is sad. That stuff could last for six to 12 months. Because when the old, when the first bumps go away in two to three months, new ones could appear. Yeah, it's a no for me. It's a no for me, honey. Please pay attention. Now, let's talk about Candace. Let's talk about Candace Owens, because y'all know she got fired from the Daily Wire. 
just a day or two after she said that Ben Shapiro couldn't fire her, mind you. Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire cuts ties with Candace Owens following Israel Hamas comments. So Candace Owens will no longer appear on Ben Shapiro's conservative news website, The Daily Wire. This was announced Friday, March the 22nd. Controversial author Owens joined the company, uh, the media company in 2021 before falling out with co-founder Shapiro last year over her views on the Israel-Hamas war. You know, because uh, Shapiro is a you. Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Now, they say the rumors are true. She says, I'm finally free. That's what she shared on her ex account. Try to act like she's all happy and relieved. Girl, please, you know this is the worst thing to happen. Owens' feud with Shapiro appeared to begin in November last year when she tweeted, no government anywhere has the right to commit genocide ever. There is no justification for genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or even considered the least bit controversial, uh, even considered the least bit controversial to state. So, though she did not mention the conflict by name, her comments were widely interpreted to her referencing the war in Gaza. She later tweeted a Bible verse beginning, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Candace, please sit down. Uh, you cannot serve both God and money, she added. Shapiro responded to the tweet on November the 15th, writing, Candace, if you feel that making money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Owens replied, you have been acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged for weeks now. And we have all and we have all had to sit back and allow it and have all tried to exercise exceeding understanding for your raw emotion. But you cross a certain line when you come for scripture and read yourself into it. I will not tolerate it. She further she further addressed the girl's comments during an appearance on Tucker Carlson's um, his series. Owen said that she still did not have any clarity on Mr. Shapiro's criticism of her and that his remarks were just ad hominem attacks. She says, I can't respond to it on, on a level of intellect because there's nothing that he has expressed in that, at least in that short clip that he fundamentally disagrees with in terms of what I said. I will say, uh, I will say that I'm not done or that I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attack. But I don't think it helps further the discussion. And if it was me, that was if it was me that was caught on video saying that uh, saying those things about colleagues that I work with, I would be embarrassed. So I think that the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. Now her comments came after a video shared online showed Shapiro speaking at what appeared to be a private event during which he described Owens' faux sophistication of certain issues as disgraceful and ridiculous. Owens went on to give tremendous credit to the Daily Wire for allowing different opinions on the network, uh, but added, "I hope that it will not remain res that I hope that it will remain respectful, and that you wouldn't throw your colleagues under the bus, so to speak." Well, it looks like the only one that got thrown under the bus was you, Candace. I'm sorry. Please make it all make sense. But here's the thing: the interesting thing about it for me. It's the fact that now that Candace has been fired, she's run to the black community. Is that why she was on Joe Budden's podcast and then the Breakfast Club just days ago? And let's talk about it. I'm going to play the audio. And I want you all to hear this because now it's very interesting to me because Candace, I'm sorry, you all have to excuse me. I'm sucking on one of these um Sweet mints that I love, they, you know, they help you to get awakened in the morning and they stimulate your brain. Please pay attention. And for those of you who have children or grandchildren, when you send them off to school in the morning, you should give them some of those with some green grapes, especially if they have a test for quiz coming up because it absolutely stimulates the brain. But let me continue. Uh, so with that all being said, I find it interesting that she was on the breakfast club trying to basically um, clear up some rumors as she called it. She said that the media lied. You know, the story that we've all been talking about as to how she sued her school and then she enlisted the aid of the NAACP. She says that's not how the story went. She said she didn't enlist the aid of the NAACP. That the NAACP heard about her story in the media 
And then they used her name and image. That's what she says. And she says they took advantage of her because she was a teen, basically. But anyway, let's listen to it. Like up, everyone, please like and share. I'm going to put an overlay on the screen and I'm going to cue this video. early signs of dementia, the way he walks, his gait, the way that he's falling, that this is crazy. Everyone should be outraged, whether you're on the left or the right. But in terms of the better candidate for black Americans, I asked people the question, how were you living under Trump? The person that they told you was going to put us back into chains. We were all going to be slaves again. How was the economy under Trump? And how are you doing today? And every time they ask that question, everyone knows they were living better under Trump because he was deregulating um, the, the environment. And he there were just people were just living better under trump and he is in my opinion a better president because at least he's he's telling you the truth and he's telling you what he actually thinks you know one of the things that i hated the most about him when he first came on the escrow i was like oh he's way too brash you know obama sounds way more polite but i asked the question do you want to be politely lied to or have somebody that's at least telling you what they think about you in in no uncertain terms so you know, I like Trump for a ton of reasons. And for me, it was always about the economic argument. And I knew that he was going to be a better candidate for black Americans because of that, especially, you know, build the wall sounded so wild, right? Back in yeah. 2016, it sounded wild. It sounded xenophobic. And I was saying, if these illegals get into the inner city communities, the first people that are going to be harmed are going to be black Americans. People people actually were mad at you, right? When you got into the conversation with T.I. at the Revolt Music Conference, right? And you were saying that and people didn't understand it, but it seems like people are, are understanding what you were trying to say back then. Yeah, and I am so happy to have those moments because, like, I, I think T.I. is a trash person. You know, I'll say that a thousand times over because, first and foremost, I had spoken to T.I. prior to that event. Like, T.I. was the only person on stage that I actually knew. Um, and for the same reasons that I met you, Kanye had put us in touch. We had talked, and I know that T.I. thinks more conservatively. So he was literally putting on a show. Mm. And so it just makes me wonder, especially with all the stuff that, like, came out in the Diddy lawsuit, like who's controlling T.I.? Because that was wild. He was literally putting on a show like he didn't know me on stage. Like he was surprised I was saying the stuff. He was way more level headed and rational when we were on the phone. And I just I still look back on the moment. I'm like, what was he doing? It was just it was like a circus act up there. And he was doing something that I thought was harmful because we were actually having a great discussion. And yet he created a little moment. And that was all the media ran with. Despite the fact we were on that stage for hours, they ran with that moment. And I was really upset about it. But you're right. I was talking a lot about illegal immigration and saying something that we need to pay attention to because eventually the black vote's not going to matter. Something that they were that they worked so hard for is not going to matter. They get enough illegals in. What are we at? 10 million under Biden. And they're doing it intentionally. Like it's going to be the same thing that they did to black Americans in the 60s. Um, what Lyndon Baines Johnson did when he established welfareism in the Great Society Act. They want to get these people in, offer them handouts, and turn them into economic slaves that will continue to vote for Democrats because they're getting free handouts. And it's it's incredibly racist, first and foremost, but because Black Americans are still, a lot of Black Americans, I should say, are still living under this deception that Lyndon Baines Johnson was a good president, even though he was an avowed racist. I mean, he hated Black people. I mean, one of the... Uh, now, hold on. I have to stop right there, okay? I want you all to pay attention. Now she's talking about what's racist. Girl, I thought you said there was no racism, which, by the way, she denied saying that also on The Breakfast Club. And now she's talking about somebody being a devout racist. Have you all ever heard her use these talking points before? Now she's so concerned about racism in the Black community. Please make it all make sense. Cool dance. But here we go. So many times, I mean, hard R referring to us as the N-word. I'll have those N-words holding Democrat for the next... I'm sorry, did she just say referring to us? Ha! We all know that she does not consider herself one of us. Girl, please sit down somewhere. But I digress. 100 years. And this man is being hailed as a hero because he had to sign the Civil Rights Act, essentially with a figurative gun to his head because the country was on fire. You know, JFK had just died and um, there were riots in the streets protesting because of racism. And he did not want to sign it, but he did. And with the other hand, he signed the Great Society Act and incentivized welfareism and, you know, programs to incentivize not marrying the black men. You know, the thing that we had government agents knocking on the door, going into the homes of black women and being like, there better not be a man that lives here. We're just here to check mm -hmm. to make sure if you want this check, dad can't be home. Every other ill that black America is facing today is because we've removed fathers from the home. So I am like a big 
you know, I use my platform to talk about men a lot and the need for male leadership, everything that is so harmful, this, you know, me too, false feminism, all of this crap, it's anti-man and it's anti-man for a reason because a society cannot survive without strong men. A household cannot survive without strong men. We need strong men to lead homes. And so the fracturing of the black family, I think, was the test like you know like we were the mice in the experiment like let's see how that goes and now they're kind of doing that writ large and i just i hate feminism so much i can't even tell you because what it's about is it's just an attack on men oh you just said a lot candace let's, let's talk about some now now with the uh the politicians right with, whether it's lyndon b johnson trump biden i think people are able to ignore a lot of their bs as long as they can get something done yeah that, that that's what it seems like so that's why i don't even like to talk about the person. I like to talk about the policy. So what is the difference between traditional conservatives and MAGA? Well, I would say the uh, between the traditional conservatives and MAGA. Yeah, like the, before before what what the, what the conservative mm-hmm. party was before MAGA and what it is. Now. Yeah. So I think what you're describing is that there was this there was this fracture in the conservative movement uh, because people realized that when he was referring to the swamp, what he meant was it didn't actually matter if you are on the left or the right. They were all working together in D.C. and selling out all of America. I mean, there is no reason why you go to D.C. and become a multimillionaire. You're supposed to be there to serve the American people. You're you're there taking our tax dollars. So what was happening was these lobbying interests, like, you know, Big Pharma goes down and they lobby and they'll offer money to a candidate to go push a drug like the COVID vaccine. Or they'll lobby for war. It's like, you know, biggest lobby, of course, military industrial complex. So we're all suffering. You're going to work because these lobbyists are getting their incentives done by buying out these politicians. And so Trump kind of hit the scene as somebody who wasn't bought and paid for because he didn't need their money. He wasn't like a random congressman going to D.C. with no money. And he just started talking about the swamp. Like, it's not even Republican or Democrat. And I want people to wake up to that because I'm not here like ride or die for Republicans. They all sell us out. Like, the stuff that they did during COVID is criminal. It's just, it's criminal. And who's we'll, found on it? But, I mean, the, just the, the, the free handouts. First of all, trillions of dollars. You're, you're, you're signing these omnibus bills. If you read into it, where that, where that money is going, it's insane. It's, you know, mm-hmm. shrink government. Don't make. Okay. I'm going to fast forward. That, that always has to who they love and get married. You know, for me personally, I never thought of my husband as a race. It's, this is very interesting to me that see people go, she's, She's married to a white man. When I look at my kids. I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that is just, you know, if you even knew half the things that I'm thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. It's, it's difficult for me to find. It was difficult for me to find a partner that was a challenge to me. You know, the challenge that I needed. What she's saying is that it was difficult for her to find a black man who lived up to her level of intellect. I just want y'all to pay attention. That's what she's really saying, but she's trying to sugarcoat it, okay? And please, and make excuses. Please pay attention. Um, whether you want to say an academic challenge, whatever it is, with my same interests, it just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it was a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people tend to marry their IQ which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, now you all know that's a load of bull. I'm sorry, say who? So people are going out here not caring about how people look, what kind of job they have, what are their ambitions, or what is their past history, whether they have criminal records. They're not worried about any of that. They're worried about their IQs. Girl, sit down somewhere, okay? I just want y'all to pay attention to the BS. Okay, not going around looking for their IQ. <laughs> oh, goodness, Ray DeBo said her man is handsome, though. I mean, he might be, but at the end of the day, she knows good and darn well that she did not marry that man for his IQ, and nor does anyone else nine times out of ten. Okay, please make it all make sense. But I can, I digress. Let's continue. You know, I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. You know, I love him very much. The stuff that we talk about, I'm like, there is no other person that I could have married. We have three beautiful children uh, who are growing up in an environment that I am just so happy that I was able to, you know, what every parent wants to give your children better than you had, you know. And I, that's all I can say. I'm just the luckiest person in the entire world. How do you feel about you not finding him attractive? I'm just liking him for his mind. What do oh you think? <laughs> he, he got he got the smear already ready for the journalists that are listening. Janet says her husband is not. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a bonus that I also think that he's beautiful and gorgeous and handsome, but it really was about his mind, you know, his ability to just dive into any subject and comprehend it, you know, you know, just any subject. I mean, whether you're talking about mathematics, economics, politics, he could read a book on chemistry, read a book on building houses, and he just comprehends the concept very quickly. So I know I married the right person and I want every person to never allow like race to be a barrier to you finding love. That is yeah. so foolish. That will stop you. I'm going to you know, fast forward. Because now they believe that what she did was just corrupt full stop, right? Mm -hmm. That she's not a person that is, oh. that he was going to be a better candidate for black. The headlines based off what. Now I'm going to, I'm going to backtrack. Okay. I'm going to rewind it. Cause I want you all to hear the part about where she's claiming that she was not uh, really enlisting the aid of the NAACP. Feel you said, as opposed to what mm -hmm. you said, you have people that are just straight up manipulate your audio, manipulate your video. Yeah. Just to push a narrative. One of the wildest things, the craziest things that people say about me all the time, it drives me crazy because it's literally made up. They're like, Candace said, racism doesn't exist. If you go mm -hmm. find that headline of Candace says racism doesn't exist, they didn't put it in uh, quotation marks because I never said it. <laughs> now, she didn't say racism doesn't exist in those words because what she's doing right here people is she's playing with semantics she didn't literally say that racism doesn't exist in those words but she basically said it within the context of the sentence that she used okay she's acting like people are making excuses and people are playing the victim and that it's not about black or white and that there is no longer oppression and all these things. That's basically what she's saying. She is essentially saying racism doesn't exist. That's what she said. Now, she may not have said it in those terms, but that's initially what her talking points that she spewed, uh, the rhetoric that she's continued to spew for years has always been saying. Okay, please pay attention. She's full of crap. Or like Candace said, racism doesn't exist because she's quote unquote, never been a slave. The words never been a slave came out of my mouth, but I never said racism doesn't exist. And it was in the context of an entire speech. The media knew that black people were not going to go watch the speech or try to find the original speech. They were just going to read the headline and react and be like, oh my God, Candace Owens said racism doesn't exist. Like, how could she say this? She's a hypocrite. She's a liar. This happened to her in her childhood. Yeah, you so, sued your high school for racism. Yeah, so, well, so that, you know, it's actually not the, that's not what happened. I didn't, I didn't sue my high school for racism. Um, but I'm protecting you. During that time, I said, right? Mm -hmm. I said, for not protecting you. They said, did you with the media does? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I mean, I get it because it's something that I've talked about at length. But, you know, essentially, I had the situation happen to me in high school where a, someone that I was actually best friends with left me horrific voicemails. They were racist voicemails. There's no other way to slice it. They, they called you a nigga because you didn't want to date them? No, it, you know, he, he actually, I think he was gay, to be honest. It was nothing about dating. I think this was kind of a circumstance of like, I had my first beer. I'll be honest. I got a boyfriend and I just stopped hanging out with my friends. Very typical high school, stupid mm -hmm. stuff. And this gay guy that I was friends with was like outraged by it. And one night he was out drinking with kids that were way younger than him that I had never met. And they left me horrific voicemails. I mean, like bring in like Rosa Parks. There were mm -hmm. tons of threats. They did what? They were just they like, it, it was, yeah, Parks. like it was, it was, there was no way to slice it, but it was, yeah. they were extremely racist and it was terrifying too, because I didn't know who the phone calls were coming from. Long story short, one of the kids in the car happened to be the governor of Connecticut's son. So it became this sort of overnight political story. And while it was going on and there were like news cameras in front of the school, I left school and just homeschooled for, um, I think it was about six, eight weeks. And basically we got reimbursed for the time that I was homeschooling is what happened. <laughs> But wow. yeah, so wow. when people retell that story now, it's like she sued her school for racism and the NAACP helped her. And I'm like, no, the NAACP did not help me. They used my face and my name to fundraise for the NAACP, which is actually the reason why I don't like the NAACP. It's like a very valid reason because I was a little girl, you know, I was 16, 17 years old. And it was a really hard situation to go through as a, a child. You know, I want you all to pay attention. No, 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 let's get into this. I got to stop her right there. I got to stop it right there with the bullshit, okay? I want you all to pay attention. Now, she said that she doesn't like the NAACP because uh, she was a child, okay? They took advantage of a child or whatever she said. And then she said, you know, I was a little girl. Ha! You just told us, fool, that you drank beer. Didn't she just say she drank beer? Now she wants to claim she was a little girl? You just told us that you drank beer. Beloved, and y'all heard that? Oh, I absolutely cannot with Candace. 
Hold on, let's roll it back. Because I absolutely cannot. Let's continue. Like up, everyone, please like and share. More of the BS continues. Outraged by it. And one night he was out drinking with kids that were way younger than him that I had never met, and they left me horrific voice. Oh, that was actually not the that's not what happened. I didn't I didn't sue my high school for racism. Um but not protecting you. During that time, I said, right? Mm -hmm. I said for not protecting you. They said, did you with the media does? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I mean, I get it because it's something that I've talked about at length. But you know, essentially, I had the situation happen to me in high school where a, someone that I was actually best friends with left me horrific voicemails. They were racist voicemails. There's no other way to slice it. And they, they called you a nigga because you didn't want to date them. No, it, you know, he, he actually, I think he was gay, to be honest. It was nothing about dating. I think this was kind of a circumstance of like, I had my first beer. I'll be honest. I got a boyfriend and I just stopped hanging out with my friends. Beer. Now she had a beer and a boyfriend. Please pay attention. Typical high school, stupid mm -hmm. stuff. And this gay guy that I was friends with was like outraged by it. And one night he was out drinking with kids that were way younger than him that I had never met. And they left me horrific voicemails i mean like bringing in like rosa parks there was mm -hmm. tons of threats they, what? What? they were just they like what? it, it was about yeah parks. like it was it was there was no way to slice it but it was yeah. they were extremely racist and it was terrifying too because i didn't know who, who the phone calls were coming from long story short one of the kids in the car happened to be the governor of Connecticut's son so it became this sort of overnight political story and while it was going on and there were like news cameras in front of the school i left school and just homeschooled for um i think it was about six eight weeks and basically we got reimbursed for the time that i was homeschooling is what happened <laughs> but wow. yeah so wow. when people retell that story now it's like she sued her school for racism and the naacp helped her and i'm like no the naacp did not help me they used my, my face and my name to fundraise for the naacp which is actually the reason why i don't like the naacp it's like a mm -hmm. very valid reason because i was a little girl you know i was 17 17 years old and it was a really hard situation to go through as a, a child you know i'm not, not like i am now so she was a little girl a child who had a boyfriend mind you and drank beer okay and here's how you know she's lying okay i'm calling bs i'm calling bs and i'm gonna tell you how you know she's lying allegedly because she said that the naacp didn't help her and she said that they reimbursed her. She didn't sue her school. They reimbursed her because she had to homeschool for six weeks. She was awarded $30,000. According to reports, she was awarded $30,000. So I'm sorry. Uh, it costs $30,000 to homeschool somebody for six weeks. I don't think so. All right. I don't think so. Hold on. Let me just get the receipts real quick. Likes up, everyone, please. Like and share. I don't know who Kundis thinks she's fooling. She's going to miss me with it. She can miss me with it. Talking about, hold on. And let's not forget her friend from high school who busted her out months ago when I showed you all the video. That girl didn't say none of this stuff that Candace is saying, okay? She called her out, quite frankly. Hold on, here we go right here. Because Candace be up here lying. Here's what she said. Now, she said, she claims that she never said racism doesn't exist. Okay, so November of... 2019, she's quoted as saying, and there are quotation marks. She said, there's no quotation marks because I never said it. It says in quotes, I do not remember growing up having all of these race issues. I really don't remember. Okay, so she was basically acting like there was no racism when she was growing up. And then, like I said, all of her talking points after that, basically, uh, are that she's trying to imply that there's no such thing as racism any longer. Now they say, uh, she sued her high school, her local school board in high school over racial harassment. Okay. So they're lying. So the reports aren't true. Candace Owens claims she never had race issues, but apparently she has selective amnesia. Here's what another report says. Conservative pundit Candace Owens said racial issues were drummed up for Barack Obama and were non-existent. See, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. 
She did say there was no racism. She didn't say it in those particular words. Like I told you, she was playing with, she's playing with semantics because she said it was non-existent, which means it doesn't exist. Okay. Now, here's what she said. Conservative pundit Candace Owens said racial issues were drummed up for Barack Obama and were non-existent earlier. But a journalist brought up a racial harassment lawsuit that she filed when she was 18. Black conservative pundit Candace Owens has been vocal about her disdain for liberals and members of the black community who claim the GOP has a track record of racial bias. But after arguing in a recent interview of that race was not an issue, a race was not an issue. Doesn't that mean that there's no racism? Let me continue. Uh, said race was not an issue for her when she was growing up. Social media was quick to pick out the point uh, that she actually filed a racial discrimination case over 10 years ago. Tuesday during an appearance on the uh, the Ingram Angle, the Blexit movement, the Blexit movement advocate said Barack Obama and not Donald Trump is actually responsible for increasing racial divides. So she blamed it on Obama, not Trump. Y'all don't find that crazy? Uh, Trump supporters are the same ones who went and caused a whole insurrection at the Capitol, nonetheless. Now, she's blaming on Obama because Obama was being hated on because he was black. <laughs> wow, really? Way to deflect, but let me continue. Now, Owens believes that Democrats used awful name-calling rhetoric as a tactic in an attempt to lay down the groundwork for Hillary Clinton to run in the 2016 election and are therefore to blame for where we find ourselves now. Obama did not let a tear... Obama did a lot. This is what she says. Obama did a lot to tear the country apart. I do not remember growing up having all of these race issues. I really don't remember it. The Trump supporter then dismissed police brutality as nothing more than a myth. Okay. Event contending. Suddenly toward the end of, the, of Obama's term, we started hearing all of this rhetoric drummed up. It became white versus black all over again. I shouldn't even say all over again because when I was alive, this was not an issue. It, it all became a race issue. When I was alive, what are you, dead? But let me continue. And this is clearly what she said because she posted this on her Twitter. Uh, let me just show the receipts, okay? This was posted by her on Twitter. She is such a nefarious liar, okay? The whole raccoon, all right? So please miss us with it, Candace, okay? You're not going to get by on this one, honey. You're going to get called out on all fronts. Y'all see that? That's from her Twitter, okay? I know you can't really see it, but nonetheless, this was posted, like I said, November the 12th of 2019. Now, despite her claims that race was never an issue in her life prior to Obama, uh, Manny Hassan, a columnist from The Intercept, was quick to point out that her, assertion, uh, that her assertion was a factual lie. She says, huh? She literally sued the local education board of a racist bullying when she was a teenager in high school. Now, to Hassan's point, in 2008, a then 18-year-old Candace filed a lawsuit accusing the Stanford, Stanford, Connecticut Board of Education of not protecting her from racially charged harassment by white classmates. In fact, back then, Candace also alleged that a student threatened to kill her and called her a racial slur. Y'all see how she switched up the game? This is what happened right here. This is the real story. Nobody's lying on her. The media didn't make anything up. And if they did, why is it that she's just now addressing it to clear it all up? When we've been saying this about her for years, because first time I reported on this stuff was in 2019. When she made that comment about racism being non-existent and blaming Obama. Okay, I reported it on Facebook. So you mean to tell me from 2019 to now, you've never said anything to say that these claims were fictitious, that you never said any of these things, these things that you never enlisted the help of the NAACP, that you never in fact sued the school, but rather they paid you and compensated you for having been homeschooled for six weeks. I find it all convenient, but let me continue. Now, ironically, the NAACP, the same group that Candace now calls one of the worst groups of black people, specifically came to her defense and helped her to secure $37,500 in the settlement case. All right, so they didn't help her. Uh, they say, I wonder how much money Candace Owens got for the sale of her soul. This is what, what a, a writer by the name of Torrey tweeted in response to the selective amnesia the political pro uh, provocateur appears to be suffering from. All right, she's not going to make me think this is all lies and BS. This is what happened. This is the facts of the matter. Okay, please pay attention. Please pay attention. Sitting up here lying and all that. Candace, it's not going to work. 
Okay, it's just not going to work. I want y'all to pay attention, but hold on. Let me see if I can find this other clip of her little lying self. Pay attention. If these people have been lying on her all that time, why didn't she ever say anything before? Why didn't she say anything before? Hold on. Let me see if I can fast forward to that part because there's, there's one part where they asked her something that every black person should in fact know the answer to. And since she didn't, I have a whole lot of questions. As bad as Trump was, his economy was worse. Hold on, I'm going to put her overlay back up on the screen. He cut health insurance. Give me just a second to cue this, beloved. Big business. As president, I put money in. Okay, so here we go, because they're going to play a little game with Candace to see how black she really is. Okay, pay attention. Not so like right, and a part of that, by the way, has a lot to do with illiteracy, which is something that I talk about all the time, because the illiteracy rate in inner cities right now is over 70%. Talking about over 70% of black boys that can't pass a basic reading exam. That is crazy. Crazy. Across the United States entirely, 40%. We're at 40%. Yeah. So people think that they're going to pu public schools to get an education. It's the exact opposite. They are slowly making sure that you're never going to be able to have a proper education. And they're going to tell you what to think. That's what they want. They want the ability of a headline. And that's very scary. You know, I talk about what they did on slave plantations, you know, why we weren't allowed to learn how to read because they, they knew that if they could control the narrative, then you could be enslaved forever. Right. Your, your mind becomes enslaved when you can't read. When you say, I just want you all to pay attention to how this witch. Okay. How she's sitting up here trying to act like she's so concerned about black people all of a sudden. Like she's so concerned about the illiteracy rate among black uh, young men. Okay, I want you all to pay attention. Now she's talking about slavery. Isn't she the same one that was saying other things about slavery prior? Saying that she was never a slave, but now she's so concerned about slavery. Please pay attention. Yeah, I learned that in a textbook. But let me read this, you know, and actually see what I think. And I think that's intentional. I literally believe that there is an evil intent to re-enslave Black Americans and the ability from... She said they want to re-enslave Black Americans. Say what now? I'm sorry. Just a week or so ago, she was the one trying to help them do it. But let me continue. Not to read to me is everybody should be hitting the alarm on that. Like, why aren't Black boys learning how to read and yet being encouraged to make music, to follow hip hop, to do this, to do that, you know, follow sports. You know, our culture is very much like go into music or go into sports. Mm -hmm. We need black scholars. We need black people that are actually aware of what has actually happened to black America, what the true story is outside of what these textbooks are trying to sell. I agree. It's, it, and that, it's very scary to me, the, the illiteracy rate in black America. No, I agree with that because a lot of times when you know black people see other black people that are successful, they're in music and athletics. So that's mm -hmm. what people gravitate towards right which guarantees them that's why they turn these people into such idols it guarantees more black failure right because here's the here's the truth what are, what is the actual percentage ch chance that you have of becoming the next lebron james zero percent let me just tell you zero percent that you're yeah. going to be the next but every black kid because of the way he's hailed as a hero and they put this is going to i'd be the next lebron james they're going to think that they have it right so they're going to put their academics a second and prioritize you know my baby's going to be the next lebron okay but he probably isn't going to be what is your chance as a black American of becoming a doctor if you stay in school and pass all the tests? 100 percent. Right. So black doctors, too. What is, mm -hmm. what is Does it make wise? He said, <laughs> since when does Candace Owens sound like Dr. Umar? <laughs> exactly. She has definitely taken a page out of Dr. Umar's handbook. OK, talking about the literacy rate of black male youth. OK, please pay attention. Candace Owens' definition of black excellence. Oh, 
that's a very good question. You know, I, I think black excellence would just be excellence period. Cause I, I always try to say the reason why you should, we should remove ourselves from saying white excellence, black excellence is cause I've realized that there's been a power in people trying to segregate our minds in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, excellence to me, I think is independence. I think it starts with independence of thought, right? Actually challenging yourself and, and challenging your beliefs and constantly re-examining them, not thinking that you have it figured out. But I, I think that once we achieve higher education levels, and I'm talking about black people <laughs> in mathematics, black literacy rate jumping to what it should be, which should be a hundred percent. If we're, if we're being honest, if you're sending somebody through the public education system, then we will start to see necessarily black people achieving more in our society. So I, I just personally think that we should be focusing on the black literacy rates, full stop, and also creating our own companies, you know what I mean? Um, and not being, having our voices controlled. We have a few questions for you. Just I'm going to let you all hear the questions they ask her in a minute, but please pay attention to how she keeps using words like us, we, and our. Now, she has not been known to use those words before when talking about black people most of the time, okay? Please pay attention. A few, just to... Just to Where are the questions coming from? These are black quiz questions. Where, where's the black quiz at? Like we have our own questions. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, with our own yeah. questions. Oh, okay. Like, where are these questions coming from, okay. sir? So, I'm, I'm like, are we on Twitter? Where are we at? <laughs> so, so where did MLK deliver his famous I Have a Dream speech? Oh, in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Okay, and yeah. Um, how many fights did Will Smith get into before his mom got scared? Oh, good question. Candace, come on. Hold on. Okay, West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Okay. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all shoot. And some some b-ball outside, outside of the school. school when a couple of guys they were up to no good started I'm making trouble in my neighborhood. neighborhood i got in one little fight y'all didn't think she knew that one y'all didn't think she knew that one it was just one it was just one it was a little one yeah no you can't sing you can't sing the whole song and be like it was a little one that's how you would do it if you were in school. It was school. a little, a little scuffle. Right. His mom got scared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, his mom was overreacting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <She's> overreacting. <laughs> okay, no, which right. of the following is Maya Angelou's first body of work? Which of the following? Well, you can. I, I'll, I'll let you guess. I wasn't gonna give you more. Well, which oh. of the following means you gotta give us? Oh, I'll give you still I rise. No. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know why the cage bird sings. That's their first one. That was a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite. I, I was just giving you my favorite, my favorite one. Still Rise is my favorite, Maya Angelou. Oh. If you haven't read the book, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou or seen the movie, uh, you really should. Excellent. But let me continue. Do you have another one? I have two go ahead, more. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going I'm to do one. You do it and I'll do another one. Okay. Finish this lyric. Temporary layoffs, good times, easy credit ripoffs. I'm scratching and surviving. Good times. You know what? That's before my time. Okay. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, is, that is before my time. That's a That doesn't mean anything. It's before all of our times, nine times out of ten. Okay? Hanging in a child line. That's the line that most people don't know, but nonetheless. It ran Jess before. is only 32. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, but how, how did, were you watching that? I was. You were? I did. I never watched it. I was. A, I watched. <laughs> I feel like I watched every other show. Except, except Good Times. Except Good Times, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, but that's that. Good Times would have been the 80s. Yeah. yeah, I was born in 92, but I watched it with my grandmother. I did who not watch it. So I watched almost all of the other ones. But okay. not First of all, Good Times was the 70s, not the 80s. Reggie said she's lying, hanging in a child line. Okay, exactly. One. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you two for two. Kids. I knew it was Good Times, but I didn't, I yeah. didn't know the. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. This is an easy one. Who's the first black woman to serve as a U.S. Supreme Court justice? The first black woman to serve as a Supreme Court justice. Black woman. Is it now? Just now? Yes. It's her. It's, uh, what should we call it? Uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. How does she forget totally the Tangie Brown Jack? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just blanking on her name. I know her name. She just, she literally just got in there. And I cannot. Right, can you just so give me a first it. letter? Um... See, look at you. No, See? I know it. I was just. Her name, her name, her name is a little I tricky. Asking, I was about to tell you. Her name is a little tricky. Katanji Brown Jackson. Katanji. Yeah, yeah. You, you asked me the first letter. Name. <laughs> yeah, I was about that's to right. Say. Now, how does she not know Katanji Brown Jackson when both of them are raccoons? Okay, please pay attention. And give me, give me the first letter. <laughs> Katanji Brown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Kintah, okay. Wait, how do you actually say that though? Kintah, Kintahi. Katanji. Katanji. Kintahji. Kintahji. She has a tricky first name. Okay. Yeah. Finish this response. God is good. 
Do you want an easy way to create professional invoices? Oh. Try and free. Hold on, beloveds. You all got to hear this. God is good. Amen. No, 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 <laughs> no. I thought you were going to say no. God is great. No. Thank you for the food. God is great. No. 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 God, right, gonna give an answer. I'm, I'm going to do you, Charlemagne. Yeah. Charlemagne, God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. That's right. Where's that from? Jesus church. Christ can't. It's <laughs> church. God is good We're all actually, the time. But why that's, do you say all the time back? Where's that's black, that from? Black church. God that's is good all the time. Black church. Oh. Everybody said it. Oh, I uh, I've had enough. I have had enough. Okay. This woman has a whole lot of nerve. Okay. Now she wants to feign concern for black folk. She wants to sit up there and have us to think that, no, I didn't sue my high school. They just reimbursed me for homeschooling. Girl, bye. Okay? Girl, bye. Reggie said, Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Dubois came over to my house when I was a child. Really? All right. Well, Thelma lived down the street from me a few years ago. Please pay attention. Okay? Or burning that status, shall I say. All right. And so this is all crazy. Claudette said, thank you, Queen. My ears hurt. <laughs> It is what it is, said recall on her black card, okay, if she was ever issued one. All right. This is all crazy. 169 said it's always been said that she sued the school. Yes, it always has been said. So here's the thing. If it were not so, why didn't she say anything years ago when the, when the rumor first started, alleged rumor that she's calling it? Why didn't she say anything then? Now she wants to come out and explain, a th explain away all these things. And acting as though she never said that racism doesn't exist. Yeah, you did. You said it was non-existent. Okay, that's what she said. Mm, mm, mm. Dragon Lily said, I knew you would save us, LOL. Thanks. Okay. She needs to sit down somewhere. That's all I'm saying. Hold on, because I got a video to show you guys before I roll up out of here. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. Hold on. Did I put that video in here? Hold on, beloveds. Uh, I don't think I uploaded it. Darn it. I had a video I wanted you all to see, honey. I guess I'll show it to you some other time. But anyway, with that all being said, everyone, please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell. Click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right? And don't forget uh, to double check to make sure that you're still subscribed to the channels because you already know how people become unsubscribed with that all being said i love you all to life each one teach one that's how we grow and thrive do something productive constructive but never destructive and always remember beloveds to keep the most high first in your lives Sold all of my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all at Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get mad <laughs> So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they next Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people awaken Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keys You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin in my, blood. my blood, kings out of my circle. You touch one of mine, and you done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hate no? 
Okay, listen, I'm sorry, you guys. I forgot to tell you all what kind of sweet mints those were. I see people asking in the chat. So those are Bob's sweet mints, okay? They're called Bob's. Hold on, let me just show you the uh, picture. All right. Gluten and fat free, please pay attention. Okay, that's them right there. Those are the sweet mints that I have. And like I said, they're very good to give to children in the mornings uh, before they go to school, along with green grapes, all right? Now, you can use the regular peppermints. Actually, for uh, when they're taking a test or something, it's probably better to give them the regular peppermints, okay? Those are just the ones I like, the sweet ones. But the regular peppermints are good, too. Uh, so with that all being said, peppermints and green grapes, you can put them in a little Ziploc sandwich bag for them so they can have it on their way to school okay especially like i said when they're taking a test or a quiz it really does stimulate brain activity all right love you all to life all right with that all being said enjoy the rest of this day beloveds i'm not going to start the song over i'm just going to close out peace